Hey guys, welcome back. Well, that was slick. Hey guys, welcome back to my series on knife. Hey guys, welcome back to my video series on knife sharpening. I'm Dan, you're watching Guns and Guitars, the channel that's all about having the most amount of fun for the least amount of money. And if you've ever been extremely frustrated trying to sharpen the serrated portion of a blade, especially after watching a product demo video where they make it seem just so easy, yet when you try it yourself, you only get mediocre results at best, then this video is for you because the secret to getting razor factory sharp serrations is not some special tool that you can buy but rather just simple household items like various grits of sandpaper, a piece of scrap canvas or denim, screwdrivers, and some kind of metal polishing compound. So if you want to see how I take an extremely dull blunted serrated edge back to factory sharp, stick around. I'm Dan, this is Guns and Guitars, let's get started. Let's go ahead and get started. The knife that I'm gonna be demonstrating this on is a Spyderco Endura 4. This thing has a street price of about $90. Very high quality knife. I happen to get this specific one on eBay for $34. Now, one of the reasons why I got this knife for so cheap is the previous owner probably just didn't know how to keep it sharp, okay? The plain edge was extremely dull and the serrations were completely blunted. Okay, that's kind of my secret to getting really good deals on high quality knives is that I just look for the ones on eBay that have been really abused and you can get them way cheaper and then I take them back to factory sharp myself. And just to be extra sure that this thing is super dull and blunted, I'm gonna go ahead and blunt it some more. Like it dragging it across this rusted old screw. And how about this steel parts tray? And why don't I try cutting up a rock a little bit with it? As you can see, this thing can't even cut paper. It just won't bite and it just tears it to pieces. So that's how confident I am in this method that I'm gonna be able to take this extremely abused serrated edge back to factory sharp. So let me go ahead and move the camera around and let's get started. The secret to getting a factory razor sharp serrated edge is actually just a couple of simple household tools like sandpaper and polishing compound. And then we'll use a couple other simple tools that you already have to apply it. Now, one thing that I'm gonna mention, because we have really really abuse this serrated edge. I'm actually gonna use one more tool that actually is a special tool, but I truly believe that every knife owner needs one of these $8 pocket sharpeners, okay? I already have a dedicated video on that, so be sure to check it out up in the corner there. But it's awesome for touching up blades on the go, and I really think that every knife owner needs one of these. But I'm gonna go ahead and show you how I use this to just do kind of some of the major work on this, okay? Because I've pitted and chipped this blade. I'm gonna go all the way down to this stone right here and I'm just gonna use it to work out some of that chipping and pitting. Now this tool, as you can see, it's flat on one side, round on the other side, you pull it all the way out and it's cone shaped for touching up smaller parts. So for this specific blade, the fattest rounded over part is gonna be a perfect fit for inside these larger grooves here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna set that down here and I'm gonna find the exact angle of my bevel just by rocking it back and forth and let it kind of teeter-totter and I can feel where it's kind of resting on that entire bevel. And I'm just gonna slowly back and forth. And all we're doing here is we are just going to work out some of those really deep pitted areas in there. Now you can get a good working edge just by using one of these, which is why I think it's awesome to have one of these tools. So basically, once you're done removing all the pitting and stuff, you'll notice that you have worked up a little burr on the other side. So to knock down that burr, basically we're just gonna take that rounded over edge and just very gently, we're just gonna knock it off like that, okay? Really easy, very light. So if we were touching up the serrated edge on our knife out in bush country, that would be it. And that gets you back to a working edge. It might even be sharp enough to cut paper. Let's actually test it. All right, well, it's still tearing it, but at least it's biting now. I couldn't get it to bite before. That's, a, that's pretty good. It's biting. It wasn't biting before, so it's definitely not dull anymore, but I would not consider that factory sharp. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take this tool and just touch up the rest of these serrations, and then I'm going to show you the secret to getting it factory sharp. To get inside those smaller serrations, I'm going to pull this out, and I'm going to use the smaller edge, and I'm going to do the exact same thing. Find that angle of bevel and just slowly back and forth. 
This is sort of a long and tedious process, but again, that's only because I abuse this knife so much just for the sole purpose of this video. Typically, you wouldn't be spending nearly this much time. You could actually skip this step and go straight for the sandpaper and polishing compound. Another thing this is doing is, you can see how rounded over some of those spikes were, but it's actually bringing them back to a point. As I push forward, because it's uh, the cone is getting wider, it's pushing those edges out more towards a point. Now that I've touched up every single little serration on here, you can see it's definitely not a super refined edge. It's very rough, but it is a nice sharp working edge. Oh, I did leave the burr back there, so I'm just gonna knock the burr off a little bit. Again, remember we want that burr as small as possible and standing as tall as possible. And that's gonna get us a really nice sharp working edge right there. Now, like I said, most of you aren't gonna abuse your blade quite as bad as I just did. So you can actually start with this step. What I got here is some 220 grit sandpaper. And then what you need is some sort of round tool that matches the size of your serrations. Now for this specific Spyderco knife, I've found that this screwdriver is about the perfect size for the wider serrations. And for the smaller size serrations, I have this little round file. And as you can see right here, that's about a perfect fit for these smaller serrations, okay? Now, you can use just about anything that's round. You could use a wooden dowel, you can use you know, screwdrivers or files, you could use um, probably a set of Allen keys would probably work really well. Um, just pretty much any round tool that you have. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna wrap our sandpaper around the tool just like this. We're gonna find that perfect angle of bevel and we're just gonna bring the sandpaper across it like this. And what I usually do is I just kind of roll it and unroll it as I'm doing it at this perfect angle. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and do this for all the serrations with the 220 grit sandpaper. And you don't have to do this step nearly as long as we did the last step. What we're really doing here is polishing the bevel and making a really small burr. The same way we do when we're sharpening with our other stones, when we're trying to just polish the bevel, make that burr as tiny as possible and stand as tall as possible. It's the exact same method, only instead of going through different coarse stones, we're gonna be going through different coarse sandpaper. Now using my smaller tool, again, just gonna wrap the sandpaper around it small as possible. And we're gonna get into those smaller serrations here. And remember, we are matching that exact perfect angle of bevel. So we're gonna step it up now to some 320 grit sandpaper. Here's what our bevel looks like after 320 grit. Now we're gonna step it up one more time to 600 grit sandpaper. Just really polishing up these bevels, really getting that tiny, fine, razor sharp burr. You know I sound like a broken record. That's why your knives aren't getting sharp if you're not following these steps, if you're not polishing your bevel, if you're not getting that burr as small as possible and to stand as tall as possible, then you're never gonna have a razor sharp edge. So now we are almost perfectly shiny on our edge after that 600 grit sandpaper. The last step is just gonna be using some polishing compound. This stuff's basically just like a crayon. You color onto a piece of cloth. This is denim. I'm just gonna saturate this. And we're just gonna wrap it around our tool. And this is sort of a one-way street. This is kind of like the leather strop that we do for sharpening a plain edge. It's essentially what we're doing here. Thank you, wind. Now this is not my favorite method for stropping this. I actually typically use my Dremel with the polishing compound and I'll show you how to do that on the rest of these serrations because it's so much faster. But I just wanna show you that you can do this without a Dremel, just like this. Now you can see how much shinier that one is compared to the rest of them, right? So now I'm only gonna test this first serration. Beautiful. All right, to finish this thing, I'm gonna use my Dremel and I just have a cloth polishing wheel and my brown polishing compound. This is the exact same stuff that I use to polish the frets when I'm building guitars. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna set my Dremel on a low speed setting and add some polishing compound to this. And then the direction that it's rotating, I want it to rotate out away from the edge. So I believe it rotates this way. So I'm gonna be running it along the edge like this and then I'll go back and I'll do the exact same thing on the other side. I like this method because 
Obviously it's a lot faster, but you don't have to worry so much about maintaining the proper angle of bevel. And it's actually gonna be a lot more productive. You're gonna get done a lot faster doing this. All right, fresh piece of paper for a cutting test. And I just wanna let you have a close up look at these serrations, look at that. If that doesn't look prettier than it comes from the factory, then I don't know what does. They're just finished to a mirror polish. They're nice and pointy. It doesn't even matter which serration it hooks into. They're all this razor sharp. Well, you get the idea. Now, if you were to do a sawing motion, as you can see, it's still a nice, fine cut. It's not tearing it the way it used to, you know? Let's be real though, nobody uses a serrated blade to cut paper. So I think a better test will be cutting some cardboard. So we'll go ahead and fold this up nice and thick. And while a plain edge can cut cardboard, it takes a lot of force and you're gonna knock off that razor edge and wear out your plain edge really fast, which is kind of the number one reason why I like combo edges. When I've got a lot of cardboard to saw through, I would rather conserve my razor sharp plain edge for finer cutting tasks and for cutting cardboard, just use my serrations to kind of saw through. And you can see, I mean, it's literally just as refined of a cut using a sharp serrated blade. And your serrations are gonna stay sharper longer when doing tasks like this. Much longer than a plain edge would. Just look at it. it's kind of sawing through this cardboard like it's nothing. Now, if you guys are like me and you wish that you knew this information a long time ago, go ahead and give me a thumbs up down there and definitely subscribe because in a future video, I'm gonna show you how you can add serrations to your favorite knife that's not available with serrations from the factory. We're gonna be putting some custom serrations on this Kershaw Shuffle DIY, which is an excellent little mini blade slash multi-tool that I love carrying around, but I wish it was available in a fully serrated option. So next week, I'm gonna be adding some serrations to this. So if you wanna see my homebrew DIY method for adding your own custom serrations to a plain edge blade, definitely hit that subscribe button. I'm Dan, this is Guns and Guitars, and I will see you in that next video.